All right. Hello and welcome to the gifting that gets referrals and reviews training. Uh, I am your host, John Israel. So really glad to have you here today watching this video, watching this training. And, you know, what's interesting about this topic, right? We're talking about gifting uh, that that gets, right, gets referrals and reviews. So we're talking about a very specific aspect of gifting um, done in a way that's going to grow your business. Now, I understand there's some conflict with that naturally, which is, you know, gifting is something that we do generously, that we give selflessly without asking for anything in return. And I do want to begin by saying that that does still need to remain the heart um, of the gifting that you do. And knowing those things, how can you do so intentionally to grow and build your business? So I'm going to begin by sharing with you a story um, of the best slash worst gift that I've ever been given. Okay, so this is the best slash worst gift that I've ever been given. So I grew up in uh, San Diego, California. So I'm born and raised out there. And I went to college in Washington State. I went to Gonzaga University up in Spokane. And when I was graduating, that was kind of a big day for my family because I'm the first of five kids to leave to, to leave home to go to college. And while I was excited to see everybody for my graduation party, I was really excited to see my brother. You see, because my brother was, he was, he was like my first unofficial mentor in life, right? So he taught me how to skateboard. Um, and he, you know, taught me how to light up fireworks and shoot a bow and arrow and <laughs> all the dangerous things that young boys do. So he was my first unofficial mentor. And unfortunately, sadly for me, he moved away to start his life. He moved to Dallas, Texas, uh, or sorry, Austin, Texas, to uh, build his career and start his family. And I moved away to Washington. Now, we hadn't seen each other for about four years. So he was flying out with his family for my graduation. So this is kind of a special day. And while we were uh, having our graduation party, so my roommates and I, we had all of our families together. Um, I remember this moment because my brother walks up and he hands me this gift. And I'll never forget because it had silver wrapping paper on. And I remember opening that gift and inside was actually this very nice leather case. And I remember thinking, wow, he got me something really nice, like a watch or something like that. And I opened the case and inside is a very simple black pen. And I remember thinking, why the heck did he give me a pen? Uh, like, I just graduated college. Uh, the last thing I'm thinking about is buying a writing instrument, right? And before I can say anything, he says, let me explain. Let me explain. He says, today is a very important day you are officially entering the real world and you're going to be making some big decisions with your life and you'll be signing your name to some very important documents. You're going to be getting married. You're going to be buying houses. You're going to be doing big things with your life. And I wanted to give you something as a symbol and as a reminder that today from this day forward, you are officially a grown-up. Now, why do I say this pen was the best slash worst gift I've ever been given? Because when you think about a college student who's graduating from school, what do you think they are wanting, hoping, or expecting to receive as a gift. Drop in the comments, what do you think? What would a college student be wanting, hoping, or expecting to receive as a gift? Yes, cash, money, gift cards, alcohol, <laughs> love where your head's at, travel, a car, all sorts of things. I didn't get any travel, didn't get a car. I got a lot of gift cards and I got a lot of cash. Now, here's the interesting thing. To this day, I couldn't tell you who gave me what amount. I couldn't tell you what I spent any of that money on. But I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, the gift my brother gave me and what it meant. 
And why do I bring up that story? Why do I start this training with that specific story? Because when you think about your business, we get very strategic about a lot of areas of our business, right? If you're in real estate, you have your buyer's presentations, your listing presentations. You might have your social media schedule of when you're planning to post and what content you're going to be putting out there. There's a whole lot of strategy that goes into our business, but how many of us have actually taken the time to get strategic about the gifting that we do? And I find very few of us actually do that. And it's it's not your fault. It's just that there's really not many people out there who are teaching gift strategy professionally. So now I want to give you a little bit of my background and history. So some, many of you guys know uh, me from Mr. Thank You, which is a book that I wrote called The Mr. Thank You Project, where I committed to handwriting five thank you cards every day for 365 days in a row. Now, what some of you may not know is that previous to that, we had started a company called Mr. Thank You, which is actually a strategic gifting company. So we have been doing this since 2009, which is um, a great time, by the way, to start anything in real estate. Uh, that was kind of our primary clientele. Uh, we would do gifts for real estate agents, loan officers, um, uh, insurance professionals, financial planners, all sorts of people. It was a terrible time to start any type of a business, but especially in the real estate space. So it's very difficult. But what was interesting is over those last 14 years, we have learned a lot about what goes into really impactful gifting that is done strategically in a way that you can feel good about that actually deepens relationship and leads to more referrals and Review. So that's what we're going to be teaching you today. So I'm going to be teaching you kind of our playbook of what we do for clients, as well as what uh, we do personally. So I'm going to show you some examples of gifts that we do in our business for our clients. So you can kind of get the behind the scenes of how to do this correctly. And there are some of you on different ranges who are watching this training who uh, are in real estate, who are in mortgage, financial planning, uh, coaching, consulting services. There's a, a whole variety. And here's what I can tell you. If in your business, relationships matter, then this is the training that you're going to want to pay attention to because this is designed to help you build relationships. So let's dive into that. The first thing I want to state about this concept is that you are one relationship away from transforming your business. Can you guys buy into that? You are one relationship away. Have you ever had one of those one relationships, by the way? Like that one connection, that one introduction, that one individual that just really, really loved you, valued you, what you brought to the marketplace, and they started making referrals and introductions or started doing business directly with you and how much business they did and sent to you made them a, a huge game changer um, in your business. Now, depending on how long you've been in business, maybe you haven't had that relationship, but having gone through many phases and multiple decades in, as an entrepreneur, I can tell you specific people who have shown up in my life at unique times that have opened doors that I could have never opened myself. And so in order for us to really begin to get the value from this training, we have to start to look at the value of relationships, the value of relationships. Now, uh, depending on your industry, this will make sense to you differently, right? But there's a concept to be paying attention to when we think about relationship value. There's two concepts here. One is called transactional value. And the second here is called lifetime value. Okay, transactional value versus lifetime value. What do these mean? Well, transactional value is pretty obvious. Transactional value is what is the, the monetary value of a singular purchase with a client, right? If this person buys from you one time, how much do you make on that, right? If you're in real estate, it could be thousands, tens of thousands, or mortgage, same thing. Uh, if you're a financial planner, it could be worth uh, hundreds of thousands over time, depending on the size of this client. Uh, that's the transactional value. The lifetime value is the combined value of all this person's transactions and referrals. The combined value of all transactions and referrals. And why do I begin by clarifying these two distinctions? Because when we talk about professional gifting, we're talking about truly investing in your relationships. Like you are going to want to spend some time and some effort and some, some money on this. Now, I'm going to give you some examples of types of gifts that might be relatively expensive and higher priced, depending on the client. I'm also going to give you some examples of gifts that are uh, 
free or virtually free uh, or very low in cost because I don't think it's necessarily that you have to spend a ton of money to honor a relationship with a gift, but you're probably going to need to invest something into it. And the reason I say that is because when people think about gifting initially, they're often focusing on the left-hand side here. They're focusing on the, the transactional value. Well, how much did I make this year? How much did I make on this one transaction with a particular client? But if we started to think about what is the potential in this relationship, if this person uses me over and over and over again and refers me all of their friends and family, what is that now worth to me? Putting a number to it, you might be actually more incentivized to invest more into that relationship. Now, again, it's not spending more money to spend it, it's because it's being thoughtful to know that I might want to invest more energy or time or money into this person because I know there's a potential much greater return, right? So a great way to look at that. So this is a, a quadrant I'm going to share with you about understanding the different types of people we're going to meet in business. So this is uh, actually built from uh, from Malcolm Gladwell's concept he talked about in a book called The Tipping Point, which one of my favorite books about why good ideas spread, right? Which is relevant for your business. How do we get our business to spread? And we talked about. So there's four types of people under two different or four different quadrants. And there are two different axes here. So the first one here is influence. Uh, people on the top here have a high level of influence and people on the low, lower end have a low level of influence. The next aspect here is reach, which there's a lower reach, which means this individual doesn't have a big network. They don't have a big community. Um, and then on the other side is high reach, which they're new to a lot of people and they have uh, maybe a big Instagram following or they're just the a, a part of the PTA and they're just friends with all the other parents in the community. But this is an example of how to break down the people you're going to meet in business. Now, the first type of person is what we call the salesperson. Okay, the salesperson fits in the category of someone who has a lower reach and a high influence. So this is somebody who maybe doesn't have a huge network, but the network that they do have, they're hugely influential, right? I think of my wife as in this example. So um, my, my wife is, she's got a very core, small knit group of friends, maybe about like five to 10 really close friends. Um, so she doesn't know a ton of people. She doesn't have a major Instagram following, but when she says something or she posts something, she gets a ton of comments. Uh, when she tells an idea to her friends, they all jump on it because she has great influence. So there's a lot of value with this type of person because when they do say something, people listen to what they say. So they make really good referrals. Now, the second side here on the opposite quadrant um, is what we call the connector. Now, the connector has a high level of reach. They know a ton of people, but they have a lower level of influence. So this is someone who you might perceive as the traditional networker, right? They just know a lot of people. They're really connected. Um, and so when you get together with them, uh, they, they love to introduce you. They love to make connections. Now, one of the interesting challenges, uh, I have someone in my, my community like this, where whenever we get together for lunch, he's always asking me a bunch of questions. What are you working on? Who do you need to meet? And by the end of our conversation, he's got like a list of five people he needs to make an introduction to. And then at the end of our lunch, he goes to his office, he fires off some emails and I get five introductions and I reply back. And of those five, I might get an appointment with like one or two of them. And then one or two of them might work out to business. But the whole point is there's a, they know a lot of people, but some of their referrals don't always stick because the connection that they have isn't as deep. Again, it's not bad because this person is still going to make really wonderful, amazing introductions for you. Now, the third type of person is what we call the maven, the market maven, someone who fits in the high influence and high reach category. And you probably have some examples of who these people are in your life, right? This is somebody who has a pretty big network. They know a lot of people. Um, as well as they uh, they have a, a high level of influence, meaning when they say something, a lot of people uh, tend to do it. So when you think of this for your own business, those people exist out there. Those are the ones that are maybe the CEOs, the business owners. They're the ones who are like, they just know a lot of people. So this is somebody who has a huge ability to make a big difference in your business right? So these are the first three categories. Now there's a fourth category we haven't talked about, right? Which is someone who has low reach and low influence. And this is where we would put in the category of everyone else. Now I want to say this with some caution because every single person on this call has been everyone else. 
including me. I remember moving to Dallas, Texas, and I was building my business and I didn't know anybody and nobody knew me. And so I didn't have a lot of influence. I didn't have a lot of reach. And so this isn't to tell you we should judge people and only spend time with those that can grow our business. But this does cause you to be thinking intelligently about the people that you're building relationships with and who has the greatest potential to help you grow your business. It's just the idea of being aware of potential inside of relationships, right? So now when we talk about how does gifting relate to this, it comes out of this book called The Power of Moments uh, by Chip and Dan Heath. Chip and Dan Heath are both brothers who are Stanford professors. And they wrote this book called The Power of Moments. And the concept behind this book is how do you, uh, so how remarkable curated experiences create lasting positive emotion. How remarkable curated experiences create lasting positive emotion. Because when you think about why do gifts actually work, right? Why do gifts actually work? It's because it creates this moment of excitement, of positive emotion, of good energy. And you're curating it because if you're doing this with strategy, you're timing it correctly. You're picking a certain type of gift because you want to have the impact. And colleges, universities, they understand this. They build things into the structure of onboarding students to the universities because they want them to have a good experience so that they stick around. All those things in orientation weekend, those are curated experience is designed to create positive lasting emotion. So the question becomes, how do we create that in our business? That's how gifting can play a very powerful role. But why does this even matter? How does gifting even do that? It's because when we give a gift to somebody, when we give a gift, it creates something called positive emotional resonance positive emotional resonance, which is the emotion one feels when they think of you, your product or services. The positive emotion one feels when they think of you, your product or services. So when a gift is done well, it is something that has this lasting impact that when someone sees that gift over and over again, they're constantly reminded of you. And ultimately the question is in your business, do you pass the cell phone test? You guys know what the cell phone test is? The cell phone test is if your caller ID shows up on somebody's phone, what do they feel, right? If I see your name on my caller ID or if my name shows up on a client's caller ID, what are they feeling in that moment? Well, if we want them to answer the phone, we want them to feel good. So it, it's our job to make sure that we're not just calling and asking and always talking about business, but that we're specifically doing things to make them feel good about being in a relationship with us. And here's the reality. None of you woke up today and said, boy, I'm so grateful to be on a gifting call today because I have a gifting problem. Like none of you probably said those words today, but what you might have thought is I have some relationship challenges. I've got some clients or people that I want to engage with that, man, I haven't talked to them in four or five or six months, and I don't know how to re-engage with them in an authentic way that I feel good about. Or I've got these really amazing clients and I want to do something special for them because I want to keep this client for life. You might've thought those things, and that's what we're actually going to be addressing. This isn't just about gifting because you need to do it because you don't. But what you do need to do to build a thriving business is to have thriving, positive relationships. Gifting is going to be our access point to that today. So there is a gifting hierarchy. So we're going to explain that to you. Not all gifting is created equal. There's actually a structure to this in your business. So there are four parts. The first level is what we call closing gifts or post-closing gifts. Now, if you're in real estate or mortgage, this is a very obvious thing, right? If you finish the sale of a home, you would give a gift to the client. Now, if you were in coaching or consulting, this might be at the, at the uh, beginning of an onboarding experience or the completion of your journey working with a client. Um, there's any number of uh, points when you would give this, but this is essentially after you have been paid and you made money, you send a gift to that person in gratitude. It's called the closing gift. By the way, I'm just curious in your uh, business, how many of you actually currently give closing gifts? If you give some type of a closing gift, drop a comment. I want to hear how many of you guys actually do some type of closing gift in your business? Quite a few. 
Yep. Love it. See quite a bit. Yeah. A lot of you guys, probably a good majority of you do this. This is why it's at the base level. Everybody needs to have a system for closing gifts that get a consistent, uh, repeatable, positive reaction from your clients, right? So we're going to give you some examples of that, but that's how you have to start. The second tier is called VIP gifting. VIP gifting is targeted to the market mavens. These are the high influencers in your network or in your community that you want to build relationships with because they can open those doors for you, right? So that's a second tier. Now, the third tier is what we call situational gifting. Situational gifting is where you, you maximize high emotion events. And we'll talk about different examples, but if somebody has you know a child who gets married or they, they have the birth of their first child or something like that, right? Those are experiences that you can send something, do a gift, and it really maximizes and enhances that experience. The fourth type of gifting is we call process gifts. Now, process gifts are, for example, in your business, there are points and steps throughout the process that you would send different types of gifts that uh, you would use to engage that person, right? So I have a client named Dennis Tuttle, very successful uh, real estate team here in Dallas. And one of the things that he has built is uh, like, as soon as they sign a contract with a client to put their house up on the market, they immediately get a box of TIFF treats that show up at their office like the next day. Uh, and then once they get to this phase where they're under contract, then they get a, a box of moving material. And then when they get to this phase on closing day, they get some key and they, they have things tiered out. Now, here's the deal. I put all of this in that order because process gifts are the last ones for you to focus on. <laughs> it like they're really great, but they're kind of like shiny object syndrome where I've seen a lot of like how many of you know you get shiny object syndrome where you get excited. You're like, oh, we should totally do that. We should implement all this strategy. And then it gets too cumbersome, too complicated, and then you don't do any of it. Right. So Dennis has built a team where he's got literally a dedicated person who does all the gifting for every client. And they do, you know, 100 plus transactions a year. So they have the, the 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 bandwidth to do that. That might not be the case for everybody on this call. So you want to begin at the bottom and closing gifts are the simplest, VIP gifts are the next most important, situational gifts as well, and process gifts are last. So I'm mostly going to focus on the first three tiers because I think as it relates to your business, this is the parts that are going to be the most useful to you. So the framework that we're going to teach this in is what we call the time framework, the time framework. These are the four keys to making your gifting impactful, okay? Making your gifting impactful. So the first part, the T stands for timing, which is when do you time your gifts? When do you send them? When does your client receive them? That is actually important. Um, I stands for the item, which is what do you give? What are the best types of gifts to send clients that have the greatest impact? Third is the messaging, which is arguably the most important part of this entire thing, which is what do you say or what's in the letter you send with the gift? And then E is execution, which is really how do you execute on this? How do you implement this in your business? So you're actually doing something and it's consistently getting you results. That's what we're going to be teaching you today. So this is the time framework. So we're going to begin and start talking about timing, right? The timing of your gift is critical. And so there's a couple points here on timing. Number one is avoid predictability. Okay. Avoid predictability. Now, if you were in real estate or mortgage, the first, and this might rile some feathers here, but the first piece here is I would say, don't give your closing gift the day of closing. Why? Why do you think that is? Why do you think that giving your closing gift the day of closing is actually not a great time to give your gift to your clients. Uh, drop a comment. I want to hear from you. So uh, people are too busy with other things. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's very emotional. There's too much going on. Um, also, someone noted it's expected. They're expecting to receive the gift. So let, let's hang on that for a second. Why is timing so important on your gift? Because one of the ways that gifting is effective is it has a very unique component only found in gifting, which is called surprise and delight. Surprise and delight. Your gifts should surprise and delight your clients. So if you give someone a gift on a day they'd be expecting to get a gift, <laughs> then you're losing uh, the, the value. I call this the grandmother effect. 
okay, the grandmother effect. I, my grandmother, rest her soul, she passed away a few years ago. But when I was a kid and she would always call and say, John, what do you want for Christmas? And I would say something like a new sweatshirt or some new skateboarding wheels. And guess what I got for Christmas? A new sweatshirt or some new skateboarding wheels. I got exactly what I asked for. Now, I was grateful to receive that. It was what I wanted. But the excitement, the looking forward to, I knew what I was going to get. So that whole surprise and delight was mitigated. So one of the challenges that I would encourage you guys to overcome is when you're giving a gift to a client, don't, you see point number two here, don't telegraph your gift. Don't telegraph it, which means saying, hey, so I'm going to get you guys a gift. What would you like me to get? Hey, I want to surprise you guys with a dinner out somewhere. What's your favorite restaurant? And then you give them a gift certificate to that restaurant. Now, that, by the way, that's very kind and it's very gratefully received. But the idea of surprising them is lost, right? So what we recommend is do at the very bottom here, it says something called planned spontaneity planned spontaneity, which means plan your gifts to go out when your clients are least expecting it. So let me just give you some examples of ways to do that. So if you're in real estate or business of any kind, uh, I recommend seven to 30 days post-closing. Send your gifts out. Why? Because they've already started to forget about you. They've gotten relaxed and settled into their house or moving on with their life. So sending something seven to 30 days is a perfect timing. Uh, also, non-gifting holidays are a great time. I'll give you some examples. Here's the other key piece, though, is time this with an opportunity to follow up. Okay, Make sure you time your gifts to go out when you actually have the physical bandwidth to have conversations. So we're going to talk about something today called um, a gifting campaign, where you, you predetermine a list of VIPs or important people, and you send gifts to everybody. Well, make sure you do that when your client, when you have time to answer all the calls from your clients calling you in so that ultimately um, you have the ability to follow up with them, to talk with them. So uh, yes, I'll put that slide back up. Someone was asking about that. So this is what planned spontaneity means. You're welcome to take screenshots of anything we got here. I'm going to move on to the next part here, which is giving you some specific dates to keep in mind, right? So here are some examples throughout the year that we like to focus on, right? Halloween, Thanksgiving right? New Year's, Valentine's Day, April, sometime for the spring, 4th of July, August, in the fall. Now, by the way, notice what holiday is not on here. What do you guys see? What holiday is not on this list? Christmas. Oh my gosh. Does that mean we are terrible human beings because we don't send Christmas gifts? No, doesn't mean you're a terrible human being. Actually means that you're, you're actually intelligent about this because you realize that who else gives people gifts on Christmas? Everybody, right? Everybody gives gifts on Christmas. So if there is a really important person you want to surprise and delight and you send them a gift on Christmas, it's going to show up with everybody else's gift. And so often it gets like put off to the side, it doesn't get remembered. And ultimately you kind of lose the impact. Now, by the way, if, if you haven't planned for this yet and you do plan on doing Christmas gifts, that's okay. I'm not saying that they're bad, um, but I am saying that there's some other dates to think about that actually make your gifting more impactful, right? So here are some other examples, birthdays, uh, a, a pet death, business anniversary, child wedding, childbirth. There's some really interesting types of gifts that you can do that you don't have to spend a lot of money on. So let me show you some examples here. So uh, we have a client who... Uh, she's a huge producer. She's actually the number one female loan officer in the entire state of Arizona. And uh, she has made this crazy commitment that anytime it is her client's birthday, anyone who she's done a deal with, um, they will get a container of Sprinkles cupcakes uh, on their birthday. Now, I know this because after we met, it was shortly my birthday and I got a box of Sprinkles cupcakes for my birthday. And I was blown away. I took a picture of it. I posted it on Instagram. And then I started to notice as we were staying in touch that she has a lot of people do that. A lot of people taking pictures of their Sprinkles cupcakes. And one of these days I was like, how much do you spend on Sprinkles cupcakes? Her answer was $20,000 a year on Sprinkles Cupcakes. Now, in my head and most of our heads, you're like, that's crazy. Why would you possibly spend that much money? Uh, well, 
you should see how much money she makes uh, to make that investment worthwhile because she's doing it not because she's worried about the money because she's focused on the relationship. She knows this is a big day. And that's what she does. Now, me personally, I don't spend any money on people's birthday. You know what I do? Uh, if I see it's someone's birthday on Facebook, I will pull up my phone. I'll find their contact in my cell phone. I'll open up a text message, open my video, and I simply sing them happy birthday. That's what I do. I sing happy birthday and I get a response a hundred percent of the time. They're like, oh my gosh, that was so great. You're the first person to sing me happy birthday today. And I think that, that to me is fun. It's free. And it's something you can do for anybody to make them feel special. So again, you don't have to spend a lot of money on this, right? So for someone's childbirth, what do you send them? Do you send them a custom baby bib? We used to do that where we would get a custom baby bib we would put like the child's uh, name on it. We'd send it out with a cool little design or the company's logo that their parents worked for. Um, sometimes I, we had, when our last child was born, uh, we had a, a a friend of ours who's a very good gifter. Uh, they sent us towels with our daughter's name embroidered on the towel. And it's funny because I met up with him later and I said, hey, do you guys do that with everybody you see that has a baby? He's like, yeah, we have like a a, a group we call it our gold group of our most important relationships. So if any of those people have some of these things happen, my assistant knows to send that particular gift out. And so his assistant took care of it. So here's what I want you to pay attention to. What system can you stick with that's within the budget that you can do consistently with everybody so that either you can automatically get that gift out or you can delegate it to an assistant because ultimately that's how this is going to work is it's got to be duplicatable. It doesn't need to be extravagant every time, right? Or a pet death, you can send them a card or a custom ornament like that. So those are some examples of timing. Now we're going to move on to items, which is a pretty important part. So what are the best types of gifts to give? So this is a good question. So my recommendation is to think of this. A gift is an artifact of the relationship. Okay, a gift is an artifact of the relationship. That is a direct quote from my friend, John Rulin, who wrote the book Giftology. By the way, if you haven't read the book Giftology, I would highly recommend it. John was one of my early mentors. I learned most of what I know about gifting from John. Check out his book on Amazon. But he has this concept of a gift is an artifact of the relationship. Think about that. Because when somebody gives you a gift that is useful, that you hang on to, like that pen that my brother gave me, I don't use this thing very often, but when I do, I think about him every single time. So that's what a good gift will do is it will trigger the person to be thinking about you constantly. So that's why in some ways we talk about gift marketing, because if your gift is done well, every time they pick it up, they're thinking of you. That's essentially what we want to do in marketing. So I recommend avoiding things like consumable gifts or gift cards or technology. Now, if you do, uh, if you are in real estate and you want to give like a bottle of wine on closing day, that's fine. But I wouldn't consider that your closing gift. I recommend things that are quality, lasting, useful, and experiential. Okay, quality, lasting, useful, and experiential. Let me give you some examples of different types of gifts that we've given um, and as well as uh, what our clients have given. So there's a couple brands that we love to work with. Uh, one of them is, is Cutco Knives. I'm just kind of curious. Are there any Cutco fans in the house, by the way? Um, some of you might even already give Cutco as gifts. That's great. Drop a comment if you're a Cutco fan. I would love to hear it. Um, so here's the deal. Why we love Cutco as a particular gift is because it's very useful. If you don't know much about the Cutco brand, they're American made, they're high quality, and they just last a really long time. Now, as, as a gifting company, we like them because they have the ability to personalize the gift. So we can actually engrave it with uh, either the company's logo who's giving the gift, or we can engrave it with the client's name on it. So that personalization, when they open the gift and they see their name engraved on it is really, really cool. Um, so that's, that's a good thing. Also it's quality. So it's not going to break and fall apart. Uh, I think of, you know, when I go to a lot of hotels, when I do speaking and I get all these little pens to write in your journal, and then, you know, later I'm using that pen from the, the Weston and then the top pops off. And my last thought about the Weston is you guys have crappy pens. <laughs> so it's not a positive residence uh, that, that I'm receiving from that experience. So think about that for yourself, something that's lasting. Uh, we love to work with a brand called Wilmy Vet Cutting Boards. They're uh, handcrafted US cutting boards made by veterans out of Wilmington, North Carolina. So what's fun is when those gifts are sent out to clients, there's a story about the, the gifts and how they're handcrafted by the veterans. So it's really, really neat. Uh, also metal thank you cards. So we work with a company called Lux Metal Cards. 
Lux metal cards. And the Lux metal cards, what's cool is they're they're literally made of it's a sheet of steel. And uh, we send these out to our top clients after we make a quick introduction. And we want to send them something really unique that they're never going to forget. And uh, for any of you guys who met me, by the way, from the Todd Duncan event. So I spoke at Todd Duncan's conference a couple of years ago. There's about 2000 people in the audience. One of the reasons that happened is because he got a metal thank you card. And when I was speaking on the stage, he showed a copy of my card on the giant screen in front of 2000 people. And I was like, oh my gosh, that one little $8 investment, because that's about how much they are, is about $8, left a huge impression on this really impactful person. So that's kind of neat. So when we think about how much should you invest in your gifting, I'm going to give you like the average that we do in our business, which is about 10% of net profit back towards gift marketing. Now, let me clarify that. So 10% of net profit. So what this means is when we look at after all of our expenses, what do we make? That 10% of that is what we target towards our gift marketing. Now, that's because we don't do a lot of other marketing. We're not paying for leads. We don't, don't do that kind of thing. I'm not saying it's bad if you do. I'm just saying I like the relationship building aspect. And so when you think about, again, 10%, that depends on what your commission is, right? So let's say you made $10,000 commission. Well, 10% of that would be $1,000. I wouldn't necessarily buy a $1,000 gift but I might invest $1,000 in that relationship over time. Does that make sense? So you're, this is what you would be using over time with that particular relationship. So we have a gift marketing budget. We spend about 10% of our proceeds towards that. Now, let me give you an example of something that did not cost 10% of net proceeds. It got a client a lot of business. So we had a client who uses us for their closing gifts. So we do all their closing gifts and they were on vacation. And particularly, they work with a lot of investors. And so he was on a beach uh, enjoying his vacation. And there was a gentleman who came by and was selling these little sailboats. So he was in the Bahamas. And this guy said, hey, you know, would you like to buy this boat? We can engrave it with your, your name on it. So my client obliges and says, okay, yeah, I'll get one made for me. And then he thinks about it. And he's like, you know what? I've got like six investor clients that send me a ton of business. Um, how much would it be if I bought six more? And so he gave him a crazy price. It was like $15 each. Okay. That was his investment. Now he had the names of the husband and wife of each of his investors uh, engraved on the side. And when he came home, he shipped off all of these gifts and he put a note inside. Here's what his note said. It said, um, uh, dear client, I just wanted to let you know, I was on vacation recently. Uh, thanks to you and all the amazing business that we've had the fortune of doing over the last couple of years. And while it's not easy to take time to relax during a busy, crazy market, um, it was a huge refresher. So I thank you for that. And I wanted to send you this little sailboat as a reminder to take the time to enjoy the little things and all the hard work you put into your business. And he sent it out to his top six investor clients. Within two months, he collected $6 million in investor business from those people. Now, not 100% of them replied and gave him business, and his goal wasn't even to get business. His goal was simply to honor the relationship, and it wasn't even an expensive gift. But what it showed them was that he cares about them, and he was thinking about them when they weren't around. That's why gifting works so powerfully. So that's a really simple example. Uh, here's another one that we recently did for a client. I have a client who has a bunch of business partners uh, that he was doing an event with, and he's taking them to uh, their mortgage headquarters up in Michigan. And when he was doing this, he took his, his best business partners and he said, hey, John, I want to do something special for all these people. They're like my number one clients. They send me all my, all, my, all my business. What can I do that's really unique? And so we talked about what he was planning on doing during the event. So they were going to go to this conference and get all this learning from these great speakers. And then they were going to go to dinner together. And so what we did was uh, I had his assistant reach out to each one of those attendees. There's about 12 people. And she found out their one word for the year. Their one, you guys ever heard of that, by the way, having your one word for the year? Like what's your word for this year? Is it power? Is it community? Is it whatever? So he got everyone's word and we found this glass company that makes these really cool recycled wine bottle cups. And we got everyone's one word and we had it custom engraved on this glass. And then what happened is he had a dinner uh, with all of the attendees and he gave every, he had everyone's play setting set with their glass with their one word for the year. And so when they started the dinner, 
He said, hey, guys, as everyone's noticing, you all have a glass in front of you that's got a word on it, and, and you're the one who knows why that word is special. Many of you don't know each other, and I just wanted to have dinner tonight and take a moment for everybody to go around the table and share about their one word for the year and why it's meaningful to you. And he said, man, John, you should have seen how many tears were shed, how much relationship and connection was created. And, and so he, we, we had four of these glasses made for everybody. So after they all got to share their thing, he, he it graced everybody with the rest of their glasses they got to take home. And he said, John, this is one of the most impactful gifts. These aren't even very expensive. They're like 65 bucks for a set of four. And they had a huge impact on his, on his business partners. So again, it's not just what the gift is, is can you tie this to an experience? Because every time when that person is home and they're picking up this gift and they're thinking about that moment, what are they feeling as it relates to my client? They're feeling, man, I love that guy. How can I grow his business? And he has a very successful mortgage practice practice out in East Texas. So those are some examples of what to give. Now, I want to go into one of my favorite parts today and transition into talking about messaging, right? Messaging is one of the most important things that comes to gifting, which is it's not just what you give. It's how you give it. What do you say? And so this will come out in one of two ways, which is either you're going to be giving this personally to a client and having a conversation, or one of my favorites is simply mailing the gift and including a personalized letter or thank you note with it, explaining why you're giving them this gift. So this is a great example of one that we did for a client a little while back uh, for a couple of them. So you guys have heard we talked about we're big fans of Cutco. So we had worked out this arrangement where uh, for Halloween, <laughs> excuse me, we had this particular, we had a really simple four inch Cutco pairing knife get sent out to this client's database of their top referring partners. And so here's what we included with the note, because again, it's not just what the gift is, but what's said. And so what we made a note of was, I love to share my favorite things with my favorite people. This is my favorite knife that we use all the time around the house. And it's also the best knife for carving pumpkins. I hope this knife blesses your family this harvest season. And we sent this out to land just before Halloween uh, to about 35 of his top clients. Now, here was the kicker. And this is one of the really wild things that when we do gifting services, we really focus on the letter and the messaging that is sent out. So here's a little piece that we added to the end of the letter that skyrocketed our client's results. We added a little PS that said, shoot me a quick call or text when you get this so I know it arrived okay. That was it. Shoot me a quick call or text when you get this so we know it arrived okay. So what we found is that about 60% of the receivers reached out to him directly and either texted him called him to thank him or posted a picture about it publicly on social media. So now what did he do with that? That's the, one of the key things. So when we sit down with a client to plan out their gifting strategy, one of the questions we ask you is what's your goal? What do you want to happen? Because in this case, what this particular loan officer was wanting to do is create appointments. And so he, all of these people who are reaching out, he, he didn't directly ask for the appointment. He just said, oh, hey, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Um, you know, hey, how's everything going? How's business? Hey, by the way, let's grab some coffee or lunch sometime soon. And then almost 100% said, yeah, absolutely. Because of the law of reciprocity, when we go out of our way to do something for somebody, they typically go out of their way for us. And so that's one of the ways that that gifting actually works. And so this is an example of what he did. And uh, it, uh, I think the campaign was like 10x what he invested in it because he was able to turn those conversations into appointments about business, get some referrals. And that's what he did. Uh, another one we did for a client um, was with a Cutco carving knife uh, around Thanksgiving, very appropriate with, uh, with the holidays. And here's the note we included. Every year in November, I reflect on all the things I'm grateful for. The one thing that stands out are the relationships, clients, business partners, friends, and family. They say the quality of our life is determined by the quality of our relationships. As you carve out time for your most important relationships this holiday season, I hope you enjoy our favorite Cutco knife we use this time of year. Uh, the right tool always makes the job easier. Let's grab some time together soon. Happy holidays. Now, again, we added the little trigger, shoot me a quick call or text when you get this so we know it arrived okay. Same thing, client got a bunch of reactions, a bunch of responses, turned those into appointments and was able to continue to build his top 
business partner relationships. So those are some examples of how you can use messaging in a letter. But I want to give you something a little different. This is actually something very tangible and tactical. The title of this training is called Gifting That Gets Referrals and Reviews. So how many of you know that uh, it's important at some stages of your business to have some scripting, like to know the right words of what to say to convey the idea that you want to your clients? Um, some of you, by the way, you you totally hate scripts. You're like, I don't ever want to be scripted. It sounds canned. That's okay. Well, here's the thing to know is that actors, your favorite movie, there was a script behind it. Um, all they did was learn how to say it like themselves to convey the idea. So one of the things that I'm going to teach you right now is going to probably have the biggest impact of actually helping you get more referrals and reviews. And this is what we call the post-closing conversation. Okay, the post-closing conversation. So how does this work? The post-closing conversation is when you send a gift, uh, let's say about 15 to 30 days after closing or the transaction. And again, we send it 15 to 30 days out because we want to get that surprise and delight. Now in that letter, we say, hey, shoot me a text or email when you get this so we know it arrived okay. Then we have them convert that and say, hey, I would love to get uh, some time with you over the phone or in person uh, just to review some things now that you've moved into your new house, right? Really simple. So then the client agrees. And then here's an example of that post-closing conversation, right? So I would say something like this. Um, so, hey, uh, clients, thanks for having me out here uh, to your house today. Um, and and first of all, I just want to say, man, th thanks so much for choosing me as your realtor for this transaction because, you know, there's so many different people in, in this market that you could have chosen, but you chose me. I just really appreciate that. And I wanted to give you something really special. Um, so we had our, our, our team get this custom engraved uh, cutting board. They're made by U.S. veterans. Um, they're just, they're, they're handcrafted American wood. I mean, these, these things are great. We had them personalized with your name on it because we wanted you to know how much we care about your family. And, you know, our goal in working with you as a team, um, isn't just to, you know, help you buy this one house. Um, our goal is to help you become a successful homeowner. And so there's a couple of things that we've built into our process to continue to help you be a successful homeowner. Do you mind if I take a minute just to go over what some of those things are? Client says, yeah, of course. Okay, so first thing, um, now that you've moved into the house, so you're gonna probably notice a lot of things that might be you know, breaking or not perfectly as you expected. So if you see that, let me know. We have a list of referrals that I will send you of painters, of contractors, of plumbers, of any of those things. Um, so if you need any of those, let me know because my goal is to be a resource for all things real estate. Um, second thing is at some point, eventually, when you guys are ready to move, uh, feel free to let me know because we help people on the buy side as well as on the sell side. Um, and we'd love to be able to help you with that in case that comes up. Um, and third, we always do this client appreciation event every year during Halloween. We do a pumpkin patch where we rent it out and uh, you can come with your family, get a free pumpkin and get a picture. So you're going to hear about that and uh, you're welcome to come. Um, and lastly, what we've found is that most of our clients, when they're moving into a new house, um, it just comes up in conversation with friends and family that people are also thinking about buying or selling a house. And I'm just curious, since you guys have moved in here, um, has anyone brought up the idea of buying or selling real estate to you? Oh, they have? Great. Hey, I would love an introduction to them. Would you mind making that? Or they might say, um, no, you know, no one's coming, coming to mind so far. Hey, no worries. If that were to happen and someone's, someone brings up buying or selling real estate, would you feel comfortable making an introduction for me to them? And they always say, yeah, of course. Okay, no worries. Last and final thing, um, we're obviously most people find thing on, things online now. If I sent you a quick link to do a, a short review about our time working together, would you be willing to do that like 60 second review? Yes. Okay, great. I'll send that out uh, after I head out of here today. Awesome. Well, hey, that's it. If you guys need anything, let me know. Pause. All right, so that right there is what we call the gifting script. If you sit down with every client and explained all of those different things to them, you know you would get more referrals and reviews. And every one of our clients that we have taught this language to, when they either meet their client after closing some time to drop off the gift or they mail it to them and talk to them on the phone, they go through this, some version of this script, 
and they see it. They have clients who will actually say, oh yeah, actually, since you bring it up, my brother was talking about buying a house. Yeah, maybe I should make a quick introduction. Just naturally, because you are offering value and not just calling to ask for something, you are more likely to receive referrals. And it also helps them understand how to keep working with you over time. Now, how many of you, by the way, would like a copy of that gifting script like breakdown? Who would like a copy of that? Okay. So we do have that scripted out um, in, a, in a little bit. I'm going to give you a, a, a phone number to text in. And if you text into that number, we'll actually email you a copy of that gifting script. Okay. So we'll send that out to you. Okay. So let's wrap up here on the, the final part of the framework, which is E, which is execution. Uh, what it says here is what's your plan? What do you say? Who's going to do it? And how can you leverage? So we've talked about several different things today, right? We've talked about uh, the the timing of when do you time the gifts that you're going to send out, uh, making sure that it's not when everybody's expecting it. Uh, the item, what are you specifically going to send that's going to have the biggest impact? Um, M for messaging, which is what will you say when you give it? Or what will you say in the letter that you send with the gift? And last part is execution, which is what realistically can you do from what you learned today, right? What is a realistic execution plan for you? Now, it might simply be get a, a closing gift system in our business. Great, right. That's fantastic. It might be, you know, we really need to target our top referral partners for this year or the top clients that bought the most from us over the last 10 years. Whatever it is, find something that you can start with. Don't feel like you have to do everything we talked about today because that's just that's just going to be a recipe for disaster. We want you to be successful. So pick something simple that you can focus on. You also might think about who do you delegate this to, right? Do you have an assistant or a team member that you can start training and teaching them on that you might have them watch this video to learn how to best execute gifting? Or do you want to hire it out? Like I mentioned, this is something that we do as a company for people is we do gift execution. So we will typically sit down with the client on a Zoom call and we'll just talk about what your needs are, you know, who you're thinking about gifting, what your budget is. We'll give you some examples of like, hey, here's some ideas of what we've done for clients. So we've got a lot more like done for you systems, what we personally do. You don't have to use this, but of course, if this feels like too heavy of a load to do yourself, you know, we're happy to help you out with that. So if you, uh, I'll make sure you get our contact info in case you have any questions about that. But the point is you, you want to put a plan together. What can you execute on? Do you want to do this yourself? Do you want to hand this off to a team member? Do you want to hand this off to a company that, that does this professionally? So that is the breakdown. So when we put all this together, uh, I hope you realize that that gifting is something you don't have to do. If you didn't do anything that I talk about today, you're probably going to be fine. Probably going to keep doing business. You're probably going to keep uh, building relationships. But my question for you is, what could it do if you implemented some type of system of generosity, of gratitude with your most important relationships? What could it do? What doors might it open for you? So my final thing for you is if you want to get a copy of the gifting script. Let me give you our phone number to text in. So have your phones out real quick. So here is the number. So 940-441-7612. Here's what I want you to text. Here's what I want you to text is I want you to text your name. I'm going to put it up differently here. Text your name and your email. Okay. Your name and your email, and we'll send you a copy of the script. Now, if you have questions or are interested in getting some ideas about gifting yourself, and you want to talk to us about potentially helping you or your team, include the words closing, VIP, or both. That's really kind of what we focus on is mostly the closing gifts, the VIP gifts. If you would like help with either one or both of those, just put that in your text message. And what my team will do is we'll reach back to you to just schedule a Zoom call to sit down with you and or your team and just kind of talk about some options about what it would look like to work together and potentially help you with your gifting strategy. So that's it. So give us a text with your name, your email. Uh, and if you want some help with gifting, put closing, VIP or both. Uh, we're going to open this up for Q&A here in a second. So with that, I'm going to just finish by putting up my contact info here. So if you have any questions, uh, our website is mrthankyou.com. You can find a lot of things there. Um, and then that's my email, john at mrthankyou.com. So thank you guys so much for your time. 
uh, and your attention today. We're going to open this up for q and I'd love to hear from some of you. Um, thoughts, comments, questions uh, as it relates to gifting. Uh, you're welcome to drop them in the comments. Or if you want, by the way, uh, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. We're actually going to um, end the, we're going to end the recording right here. So that way um, this is